too bad. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay. Uh, yeah, today can be a... I don't like teaching in front of projector, but I'm going to try. And then I can do this. So let's, whoa, let me give it to focus on something. Hi, okay, good. Um, so what we're about to get into, so, so last time we talked about, we ended with composition of functions. So we're gonna, we'll come back and do some more of those. That's section three, four. So today we're gonna look at three, three. So part of three, three is using the graphing calculator, and the other part is something called average rate of change. So we'll talk about that in a second. I just want to focus on some calculator stuff. So let me ask you, um, let, let's try something by hand a little bit first. And then we'll see what the calculator gets. Uh, what if I ask you to graph um, this? What should that look like if I graph it? Who can tell me anything about it? Should like a, look like a what? Parabola? Parabola? Yes? Would it be this parabola or that parabola? Down. down. Why down? X squared is negative. I love it. Right? So it should kind of go down. I'm subtracting squared numbers, so it should kind of go down in general for extreme values. In the middle, it's going to have a peak somewhere. Okay. All right. So this could be like company's profit normally has down curve because you wouldn't expect infinite profit. You would hope for infinite profit. But normally it's this. So you try to get that sweet spot for the maximum profit, right? I'm not a business person at all, so that's the most I'll say about business. Um, if I want to graph this by hand, we kind of know the shape, so we don't have to do as many points. How do I generate some points? How do I generate some points to plot? Yeah, yeah, so I can make a little XY table. So let's plug in some negative values. My normal go-to for five points is like negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. Kind of makes sense. You want some negatives, you want zero for sure, you want some positives. Uh, so somebody help me out. What do you get when you put a negative two in there? Anybody? 10 times negative two is? Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna put a negative two in. So you get negative 20 minus Four. Negative twenty-four. What about if I put a negative one in there? Negative ten. Yeah, negative ten minus. Yeah, yeah. So negative ten minus one, negative eleven. Get gas. When I put a zero in there, I just get. Cool. And when I put a one in there, what do you notice? Now I'm just talking about positive numbers, right? So I get positive 10 minus one is nine. nine. And when I put a two in there, I like it, right? Yes, okay, good, sorry. I was making sure it's doing what I want it to do. Now, do you see how, all right, all right, all right. I wanna kind of do this. Let's put in there, let's put five in there for some reason. What do you get when you put a five in there? 25. 50 minus five squared is 50 minus 25, 25. Cool. Mm -hmm. What do I get when I put a 10 in there? 10 times 10 minus 10 squared, right? Mm -hmm. Is that cool? Yeah. 100 minus 100 is zero. So it's zero at zero and it's zero at ten, right? Can anyone tell me why it's not a surprise? If I just said to to factor this, what would you do? How could you Take factor out. that? Take out an x and what do you like with? Ten minus x. When is this zero? <coughs> when x is zero or when x is ten? So it makes sense we got it zero at zero at 10 at zero. 
And why does that make sense? We expect it to be parabolic, so it should be zero somewhere, and then it should be zero again somewhere else. Yeah. Okay, okay, maybe. All right, so let's try to graph this thing. Uh, let me see, how am I gonna do this? <laughs> how do we do this? Um, let me make, I gotta figure out what my scale should be, right? Um, let me ask you this. It's gonna hit the x-axis at zero and 10, correct? Mm -hmm. so, at, so I can make my x scale, maybe let's make it by, Two, two, four, six, eight, ten. So it's going to be zero at zero and zero at ten. Is that cool so far? Okay. Now, how high do I need to go? What's the highest output I see up here? Twenty-five. So what scale should I maybe use for the y-axis? Yeah, maybe about five. It's five, 10, 15, 20, 25. So I know at five, it's 25. How are we doing so far? Okay, I like it. And then I can fill in a couple more just because. So like at two, it's 16. And at, where are, what else do we do? We did one, it's one, it was nine. Yeah, okay, we don't have enough over here, but it's okay. Because now I can see it basically goes like this. And of course it keeps going forever. But let me call this, this is me throwing a ball at someone else, right? So I throw it, yay! And then it comes over there and they catch it over there, right? So if you ever play baseball, play any sports, you throw a ball up, it makes a parabolic arch. In real life, it's not a perfect parabola because there's wind and there's all this other stuff. Okay. Maybe, maybe. Of course, if you use a wiffle ball, it's going to have a different trajectory than a softball, than a baseball, than a football. Okay. Um, so what I'm curious about is if this is the height from the ground, can you guys tell me when is this increasing? When is this graph increasing? From what to what? Zero, zero. Okay, don't tell me a point. Okay. So when I ask you when is something happening that's x, or where something's happening okay. that's x, if I say I ask you what the values are, that's y. So if this is uh, let's say this is time in seconds, right? So from between what two times is the ball going up? Zero, zero, to, zero, to, zero to five. Zero to five. five. I love it. How would I have to write that answer to capture all the locations it's going up? Because isn't it going up at 2.639472188? Yeah. Right? So how would I, so if I ask you, where is it increasing? Um, zero up to five. Yeah? Zero. zero up to five. Now, now let me ask you this. At zero, you know, uh, you can put it right, it's fine. But at five, what's happening right at the top? Is it still increasing? So if I throw in this right here, right at the top, is it still going up? Is it going down yet? It's just sitting there for a second, right? When you throw something up, doesn't it kind of look like it pauses first? Just it pauses. It's like, all right, maybe I'll come down now, right? So right there at the apex, right at the, what is that called, of course, that point? Starts with the V. Vertex, right at the vertex, it isn't going up or down. So if I ask you where is it increasing, should you include five or not? No, because no, it's not still going up after five. It, it got to its highest point. So don't include five. So in this section, you will see graphs and it will ask you, tell me when it's increasing and decreasing. That is all there is to it. Do you understand? It literally is. Like if this is a profit function, when is our profit going up? And when is our profit going down, right? You just, that's all you have to do is just say, okay, when is it going up, when is it going down? Maybe? So another name for the vertex, by the way, and, and actually anything that has these little hills and valleys, a name for those, which totally makes sense, is the turning point. 
Those are turning points. Which totally, uh, I'm just going to turn and come back, right? Maybe? Are you guys all right? Good job. Okay, maybe. So, of course, where is it decreasing? Yeah, and the bracket, to be really honest, uh, well, I would sort of put parentheses, but I would understand, I'm going to change what I said earlier, just because that 0 and 10 is not doing anything after that. It stopped, so it's not going anywhere after that. Yeah, at the 5, it sort of stopped for a moment. At the 0, it hasn't started moving yet. At the 10, it stopped, right? Okay, okay, maybe... But you definitely don't include the turning point because there it's not doing anything. How are you feeling so far? I mean, this isn't too crazy, is it? So you see a problem like this, you should go, oh, good, thank God. Right? Um, where does the maximum occur? I didn't ask you what it was. I asked you where does it happen? Yeah, t equal five seconds, right? Time is five seconds. Only, I put a little x dude in there, so I'll use x. x. If I say, what is the max value? 25. 25. Love it. And I would give you units. I should have said this before, but we'll say this is in feet, and this is in seconds. So 25 feet up in the air. So I threw a ball to a friend. Threw it, maybe underhand, I don't know. And it went up and got it to 25 feet, and then it came back down. And it got to him 10 seconds later. Right. Is that cool? Okay, okay, maybe. Nothing too crazy. So let's see if the calculator is able to do this for us also. So we can do this kind of thing by hand because it's not too freaky of an equation. We'll put the equation back up here. Now, so if you have your calculator, get it ready. If you don't, I'm really sorry. So right now, holy shit, there's a little bunch of Go back that way. All right. Focus. Uh, there. All right, so how many of you guys have uh, never really used a graphing calculator before ever? Anybody? Okay, so real quick, a couple, couple basic things. Um, real quick, before we do this in there, a couple basic, basic things. Uh, if I wanted to do 2 minus 5 times 3 plus 8 squared divided by 11. If I want to do that, the beautiful thing about a graphing calculator versus one of those silly little four function calculators is you can write it, you can put it in exactly like that. And it, this calculator understands order of operations. So if you put the problem in wrong, it's gonna give you the wrong answer. So I can put this problem in here exactly the way it's given to me. I'm gonna get the right place in here. So I can see. Two, focus. Okay, so two. And, on, and already we've run into a problem. You guys see a couple of negatives on your calculator? You guys see a couple of negatives? You see the one, right? The minus? Oh. And then there's this. So believe it or not, this is hardwired differently. This is subtraction. This is negative. So when, is, when you want to subtract, you use this guy. If you want to make something like negative 5 plus 7, you use this guy. Does that make sense? They had to hardwire it differently, so be careful. So we want to use this bad boy. Two minus, or should I say, five. And what's the operation here? What's, it, what's the operation? Times. Times. Now, I don't think you need to, but I always, I'm just kidding. Times. Do you guys see your parentheses? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there they are. So parentheses. 3 plus 8, close parentheses. And then what do I want to do to that set in the parentheses? Square it. Square it. There is a squared button right here. That's nice. 
So there's no cube button immediately. So I can square it real easy like that. We'll do another power here in a minute. And then I want to divide by 11. So, I mean, look how similar that looks, right? So if you've never used one of these kind of calculators, if you had a scientific calculator, it's the same thing. You can see the whole thing, right? Which is kind of nice. Yeah. Oh, neat. I didn't even think it would come out nice. Oh, yeah, 3 plus 8 is 11, Jeff. So you picked nice numbers. Okay. You guys all get that number? Anybody not get that number? You guys okay out there? Okay. Um, what if I did all that and, damn it, this was supposed to be a plus here. Right? I like copied the problem down wrong. You with me? So then what I can do, hello, Ant. You want to be a little star, or you want to be on the paper. Oh, I'm just, I'm just making you cool. All right. Come on, little dude. Come on, little dude. There you go, sorry. Um, up, up, up. Oh, shit. All right, so I just kind of gave it away. You could either, if you have a, one of the newer calculators, I think most calculators can do this now. You can, you can just push the up arrow, hit enter, and then you can go make it a plus, right? That's kind of nice, because sometimes you put these big ass computation in there and then you're like, oh shit, that was supposed to be a five, not a six. So that's, you can just quickly edit. Is that cool? Kind of nice? What if I wanted to take the square root of, well, let's make a really gross number. Everybody do this with me. Uh, seven minus three divided by uh, 17. Did I say three? <laughs> seven minus eight divided by 17. That's awesome, Jeff. Everybody got that nifty ass number there? Everybody with me? Okay. Let's say I want to take the square root of that. So the way to do that really quickly, everybody see your square root button? Right above square. So you hit second is like your shift button. Second, squared, so that's the square root. Does anyone right now have a square root symbol with a parenthesis next to it? Yes, so that's one of the older calculators. Uh, nothing, nothing against it. So basically you don't want to close that parenthesis until you get everything inside that you want. The newer calculators, the square root symbol will just grow so you know exactly what's in there, which is kind of nice. Uh, but we just want to do this. Here's one of the coolest freaking buttons on the calculator. I don't want to have to always retype this whole damn thing, correct? So the coolest little memory thing on the calculator is right down above the negative button. See where it says A, N, S, answer? So if I just hit square root of shift negative, a N S always has the last number that was on the screen. <laughs> so it's like a memory location, but it's an automatically updating one. So now what would be in A N S? What what number would be in it? No. Sorry? What number would be in A N S now? What's the last number on the screen? Two point five five. Okay. Right? Is that? Do you guys understand? Okay, okay that's some basics. Um, I do have a calculator guide that I, I don't think I've put up on Canvas yet. And there are calculator workshops. I'm doing one later today, and then uh, one of my tutors is doing one online tonight. I don't know, that's one of the emails you should have gotten from me about the calculator workshop. Okay, we'll do more stuff, more basic stuff. So right now, let's go back to this. What button seems really important for telling the calculator what you want to graph? Like, notice the whole top line of the calculator is all about graphing, right? There's the Y equals button. You can change the window, you can zoom stuff, you can trace the line, and of course, graph button is kind of like on the nose. Um, so, let's go to Y equals. Now I got some stuff in mind, so I'm just going to hit clear. So everybody, when you hit Y equals, does it look like this? Anyone have something different? If you do, just let me know. It's nothing bad. You're just in the wrong mode. Everybody's got the Y equals stuff showing up? Okay, so let's put our function in there. 
10. Oh, go ahead and do that. All right, sorry. Go on. Did it hurt you? I hurt you. Oh, okay. All right, so 10. And here's your X button, right? There's your X button, 10X minus X squared. Everybody cool with that? All right, let's hit graph and see what happens. All right, mine looks like that. Does anyone have that looks something that looks very different? All right, a few of you guys. So do me this favor. Um, if you hit, if you hit zoom right in the middle, zoom standard. If you do that, everybody's graph should look like this now. Can you see that poor little dude? It's not showing up too, too well. But it's become a focus. Okay. All right, how's everybody doing? Everybody got that? Nobody got an error message or anything? What's up? I did, but I just found out why I put up to the other. Oh, okay, okay. What's kind of wrong with this graph? Does it show me everything I want to see? No, damn it. I paid enough money for this thing. So, where do I want to see that I currently can't see? The yeah, the vertex. The vertex, remember, what was the vertex at? At what output? 25. And when you do standard, it's negative 10 to 10, negative 10 to 10. Right, x min is negative 10, x max is 10, y min is negative 10, y max is 10. I want to make this number higher, yes? I want to make the maximum y something above 25. So if I hit window, I can control my window. See, x min and x max seem fine. Let's make y max, let's make it 30. So now I'm going to be able to see further up. So if I hit graph, sweet. So you can you can directly control the window. Right, really, all the, the graph exists, and I'm just sort of looking out this window at it. So I can kind of move the window up, and I can move the window around. And does that make some sense? And I can zoom in if there's a lot of shit going on. I can zoom in. Um, we already know what the vertex is. What's the vertex again? Vertex is a point. 525. That's the vertex. I want to make sure this calculator is worth all the money. It better be able to find that point for me. Can somebody tell me that point is the what of this graph? It's the apex. Apex, I love it. So it's the maximum value, right? If I had a parabola with that one, there would be a minimum value. So let's do this. All my graphing stuff is here. Most of it's here, right? And right now, I want to make the calculator calculate something on my graph. So therefore, it makes sense I want to go here. So go second trace. And there's some stuff in here you have no idea what it means, but most of this makes pretty good sense. So let me just show you what some of this does. Value would, tell, would say, okay, if you put a number in, it'll tell you where the point is and it'll give you what the output is. So isn't that what we got? Where is that? 2, 16, right? So that's good. Calculator's doing good so far. Everybody see that? Is that all right? That's what value does. What do you think zero does? No, it finds out where the function itself is zero, so it finds the x-intercepts. So we'll talk about that later, hold on. So obviously I don't want minimum, this is not an up parabola, well, I want maximum. So let's do maximum. So look at the, it's gonna ask you three questions. What's your favorite color? No, what is your quest? No, it's gonna ask you, 
give me the left side of the answer, the right side of the answer, and then give me a guess. Because that gives the calculator an area to search in. So what I want to do normally is if I put the cursor right about on the answer, right? Actually, that, the trace actually gets it, but oh well. You're not always going to get that nice. If we're going to move to the left a little bit, I can hit enter. So that's the left side. If I go back to it and go to the right a little bit, enter, that's the right side. So now the calculator is going to search in there. And then it wants me to give it a guess. So I'll put it right near the top. Poor little dude. <laughs> you might see this sometimes because, you know, he's trying his best. But it's basically trying to say five, but there's an algorithm it uses and sometimes it just kind of stops when it's like that's close enough. So five, 25. So maybe. Okay, I like you. Okay. Um, so let me show you, let me go ahead and show you um, zero. Can, can somebody help me? Can we see this well enough to see like the bigger x-intercept? Can I really see the bigger x-intercept really good? No. I, I want to be able to kind of see it better. So what should I change so I can kind of see it better, bring it more into the center of the window? X max. So if we go back to window, and I change x max, let's make x max 20. And then I hit graph. Now I can definitely see it. Right there, yay! We already know what that is, right? That's 10, 0. We already knew that, but let's see if the calculator agrees. So if I go again to second trace, and this time I use 0, it's going to ask me three very familiar sounding questions. It's going to say left bound. So what I normally do, I put the cursor right on the answer, and again, I pick too nice of a function. Functions are not always going to be this nice. And I move to the left a little bit, enter. Right a little bit, enter. So now I give it an area to search in, and then I give it a good guess, enter. And there you go, 10, 0. But yeah, let's all agree, this is a very nice function. I can give it a function like that, and it's going to you know, help me calculate exactly what these are. Is that all right? Is that okay? So far? So that's being left and right of the x axis. Yeah, because what it does, it, there's, a, there's a class I teach where I actually teach the students the algorithm it uses to find these things. So the algorithm, if I tell it, I know the answers between this and this, that helps it kind of get it because if I didn't give it that it would just look it would just go crazy so I give it a little it's in this area calculator okay so then it's able to find it better yeah and maybe nothing too crazy yet okay so let's graph let's graph uh, a different function so go back to y equals and take that function out let's graph this function. Um, two over x plus x over three. Is that going to be a little bit worse? Is that going to be a nice function, do you think? Is there a value of x where this function is going to freak out? Zero, because it's trying to divide by zero then, right? So something weird is going to happen at zero. Does that make sense? It's got something weird has to, because if I try to plug a zero in, function, I don't know shit. You guys with me a little bit? So let me just ask you this. What, 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 oh, this is going to be kind of silly. What's two divided by two? What's two divided by one? What's two divided by a half? Four. Right, because times two, right? So two divided by one four, eight. What's two divided by one ten? Twenty. So do you see how the closer I get to zero, the bigger the outputs are? Right? So what do you think is gonna happen at x equals zero? It's gonna go to infinity, right? And on the other side, it would all be negatives. So we're gonna actually see that happen. Okay. Real quick, before we put in the calculator, um, 
if you give me a couple points for this, what if uh, x is uh, 2? What do we get? 2 over 2 plus 2 thirds, right? We get 1 and 2 thirds, correct? It's like 1.66. Okay. What about 1? 2 and 1 third. I like it. And what about negative 1? Yeah, negative, well, negative 2 and 1 third, right? And then negative 2 would be negative 1 and 2 thirds. All right, all right. So we already have a couple points to expect. So let's put this in the calculator, see what it does. In the calculator. So go back to your y equals, clear out the other one. And let's put in here 2 divided by, no, 4, x plus x divided by 3. Okay. So now let's hold the calculator. Now, if I graph, remember how I changed the window for the other one? Let's just hit graph and see what this looks like. Dude. Did anybody expect that? Yes? I love it. Somebody back there is like, hell yeah, man. Uh, let's hit, let's all do this. Let's all hit zoom six just to kind of bring it back to standard, and then I think it'll be just a little bit better. All right, so a couple of things I want to ask you. If you see it's zero, it's doing what we thought it would. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, I always think about, uh, I'm sorry, I'm a geek. I'm like, it's a trap, and they got to pull up. Um, I'm afraid to shoot you, they got me. All right, right, sorry. So it does that on both sides of zero. We knew something weird was going to happen to zero. We did. Um, is there a minimum value? Like a, let me ask you this. Let me make sure you really understand. A local minimum. Is there like a minimum for it like that? So what I mean by that is, um, here, I'll put that up here. What I mean by that is, if I had a graph that looked like this, this is definitely a minimum, correct? Mm -hmm. Isn't this one also a minimum? Like a local minimum? You guys see what I mean? Like that's a local low spot, right? Okay, maybe. This is a high point, isn't it? Even though it's not the highest point, it's still a high point. So this is what we call a local max, and this is what we call a local min. So can anyone tell me, where does it seem like there is a local min? I'm not sure how to tell you this. Okay, I, I appreciate that. Right? There seems that there's definitely negative infinity here at zero, sort of. But at zero, oh shit. I thought it broke it somehow. Just pull. At zero, it's not really anything. It's sort of undefined. So I'm going to exclude that. Does anyone see where it kind of bottoms out? Is there anywhere where it bottoms out? Like up here, right? Like around one or two or so, right? You guys see that? Like around x equals 1, x equals 2, it looks like it bottoms out. So how am I going to find that location? The exact location where it's the lowest. Say again, sorry? No, I said no, where it touches the y. Where it touches the y? Yeah, the lowest. The y-axis? Yeah. So that would be, well, it never touches the y-axis here. Do, do you guys all see how there's a lowest point Right around x equals one or two, yes? Or maybe even three, I don't know. Maybe between two and three, there we go. Now I'm looking at it more directly. You guys agree there's a, because it definitely comes down and then it goes up. So there's a lowest point in there somewhere. So I can do the exact same thing we did earlier. I can find the minimum. So if I go back to second trace to go to calc, I can say, tell me the minimum. So again, I want to, it's right around here somewhere, right? So I'm going to go to the left a bit, enter, and then I'm going to, here's the answer about right here somewhere, so I'm going to go to the right a little bit, enter, and then I'm going to try to put my cursor about where it looks to be lowest, and that's what I get. About 2.45, and the minimum output looks to be 1.63 or something. So if this was a graph showing 
energy use of some machine, I would sort of want to be at that minimum. So I, I kind of want to know what the graph looks like. So I can try to target that minimum. So I'm using less energy and so forth. Maybe. Okay, maybe. Or if that was cost, I'd want to be there. So I'm, I'm spending the least amount of money that I have to. Whatever. Okay, okay. So that's a couple of key things the calculator could do for us. Let me ask you, all right, here's where things get really funky. You guys all agree with me that there is a, where are you at? Let me write this down. There is a minimum, there's a minimum at about 2.45, 1.63. Yes, that's what we got. There's a minimum 2.45, 1.63. So just looking at this part of it, just looking at this part of it in the first quadrant, where is it decreasing? From what to what? Just looking at the first quadrant. Don't worry about the, the, the negative part. Just look at the first quadrant. Where, when is it decreasing? From zero. Good, from zero. We're not gonna include zero because it freaks out at zero. Until what X value? 2.45 roughly, right? So it is decreasing from zero up until the turning point, which we just figured out is 2.45 roughly. So where is it increasing? 2.45. From 2.45 and forever after that, right? So when they ask you, where's the, if they give you this funky function and you graph it, and it's got funky little turning points, and they ask you, when is it increasing, when is it decreasing, your first job is find those turning points. Because it's going to be decreasing or increasing up until that point, and then it's going to be the other thing after that point, right? If I can just find the turning points, I know it's before that, after that, that it's doing different things. Maybe? You guys seem really excited about it. One more thing I want to show you while this is in here. You see right above graph it says table? Mm -hmm. Turn over it real quick. I'm going to do something weird. All right, let me set my table at normal. Okay. So everybody hit second graph. Now I have this. Does anyone have something different happening? What, um, do you just have different numbers or is it blank? My uh, x values are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, sure. What about you? 20 minus 5 and negative 20 minus 5 and negative 20 minus 5. Oh, okay, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Anybody else have something different than this? Okay. So, real quick. Uh, do you see above window where it says table set? Mm -hmm. So, if it's second window, I can actually set the starting point for me is zero. Let me go ahead and make my, this tells me how much it goes by. So, currently I'm going by 2.5s. So let me go by ones, zero, go by ones, and then make this one auto. If everybody does that, we should end up with the exact same table. So what's true at zero? What's it tell me? Error. Error. And of course, we knew that. Can't plug a zero and freaks out. So the best the cop do is go something weird out of it. Right? But this is useful. Look at this shit. This is XY table, right? And here's really something. All right, let me show you this. Uh, go back to table set, second window. And you see where it says independent, dependent. Do you guys remember which variable is the independent variable and which variable is the dependent variable? Oh, shit. X is independent because it's the one I make it a number. And then it forces Y to be something. So Y is the dependent. Y depends on X. So if I make independent, oh shit, if I make independent ask, go back to your table. Oh Jeff, what have you done? You bastard. Well now I can actually just put in, if I put 5 in, it'll calculate. If I put 1.23 in, it'll tell me. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? So now you can actually create specifically exactly the XY table you want. 
or you can make it generate at zero, one, two, three, or whatever, right? That's freaking nice. Holy shit. Okay, maybe, maybe. So if I put zero in, of course it goes, oh, I can do it. If I put 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, 0 0.00001, see how it just keeps getting bigger and bigger, and that's why it went to infinity. Okay, so I love it. I love it. Okay, so I think it's enough with the catheter at the moment. Right? So you are gonna have to graph a few things in this homework. You are gonna have to be able to make the window better so you can kind of see what's going on. Oh, I didn't show you one of the coolest things. Um, go back to the graph. Let's say I wanna zoom in. Anybody ever watch those silly CSI shows? Enhance. And, and so, so we're gonna enhance this area right there. So one of my favorite little dudes, and yes, I have a favorite thing on the calendar. Remember, I'm a geek. Hit zoom box, the very first dude. And you should see a little cursor show up somewhere. So can everybody, if everybody puts their cursor like, can you guys see the little cursor dude? Little cursor dude? Put him about right there, right? So what that is going to be, if I hit enter, that's the corner of a box. And then if I hit up and over, I make the little box. Yeehaw, there we go. Man, this is really shaking up here. Then if I hit enter, it's going to zoom in on just that part. So then we can see a little bit better that, you know, it does curve in minimum and then it starts to go back up, right? So if you have like some graph where it's really a lot's going on, it's going crazy, you can just kind of zoom in on that part to kind of see what's going on. Is that, is that all right? You guys don't have to like it as much as I do, but hopefully it at least makes sense. Okay, all right, okay. I think that's enough with this at the moment. So we will have moments throughout this semester that I'm gonna bring up graphic calculator, I'm gonna do some stuff, show you how to do it, because you're gonna have to be able to do it for your homework. Uh, and it's good to know what the hell this thing can do if it costs $100 or something crazy. Okay, okay. So, let's convert back to the fold here. Bam. Right, love? So, last few little things here for today. Oh, shisa. Go home, calculator. to have some group work for everybody to do um, to kind of like work with other people with some of the stuff that we've been doing. I, I, so I've already done this once, I'm gonna do it again. Plus I wanna give people more time with the homework because I think some of us are kind of stuck in chapter one, chapter two. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, to see if this really hurts anybody. I don't like doing this, but I'm gonna make test one will now be on the eighth. So hopefully nobody's upset at me about that. It's a Thursday. Sing it. It's a Thursday. That's a Thursday, exactly. So I'll have the practice test on Monday. I'll have an answer key for that on Tuesday. It gives us one more day to sort of like review some stuff we've done, really solidify it, and then do just a little bit more new stuff, and then we got the test. Okay. And, uh, so depending on how we do on this quiz, I'm going to sort of make a like a little uh, review sheet, including some function stuff, uh, and we'll do some group work, uh, just so we can all get more practice with it, with me around, right? Um, so, rate of change. Um, 
Speed is a rate of change. Uh, why is speed a rate of change? Because what's the units on a normal speed? How fast were you going to get here this morning? Miles per hour. Miles per hour, right? Say again? 100? Okay. No, I was, <laughs> was going to say you can self-report if you want to, but I can't do it anyway. Um, miles per hour. So it's the change in position over a certain amount of time. So it's a rate of change of position, right? Is everybody with me? So almost any unit that's a ratio is going to be some kind of a rate of change. Words per minute that I can type is a, is a rate of change. So let's say I have, um, let's do this thing again, where the one we just did a minute ago. Remember this guy? Uh, that's all. All right, so 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So we just had this bad boy here, right? So let's say this is me driving away from my house, realizing I forgot something and coming back. So this is the, the Y is distance from my house. And the X will be um, minute, let's say. Distance from my house in miles. Let's see if this makes sense, Jeff. <laughs> Holy shit, that's a bit much. Well, screw it. I, I am in my private jet. I'm just trying to see what the units are going to come out to be. I'm in a very fast moving vehicle. And I leave my house and then I come back. I have a jet landing thing at my house just to be able to. Um, so here's what this looks like. We saw this earlier. We graphed it ourselves. We graphed it in a graphing calculator. I want to know how fast was I going on average from when I started to when I turned around. Now, I, I want you guys to realize. If I was going a constant speed, real quick, if I was going a constant speed, what would that mean if I start at my house? If I'm going a constant speed, what should be true about the look of this? So I'm traveling, it should be a straight line, right? Because I should be getting away from my house after one, maybe it's a straight line like this. So I, sh I should be, basically it should be the same slope all the way through, right? And I kind of gave away something there. Average rate of change is slope. That's what it is. So if I was going at a constant speed, it should be a straight line. I should be getting away from my house at, a, a, at an equal amount of distance over time. So is this a straight line? Is my speed constant then? No. So if I want to know the average speed, because can you tell me the speed that I'm going? No, because I'm going at different speed the whole time, right? Does that make sense? I'm not going in a straight line, so I must be going uh, at a different speed. So I want to know the average speed. That's not like as the crow flies kind of thing. So just tell me, how, how long is this? How long is this interval here? How, how many, how many, what, how much time? That's five minutes. So in five minutes, how far away did I make it? I made it 25 miles, miles from my house in my jet. So can somebody tell me, let me say this in two different ways. What was the average rate of change of position? Or another way to say it is, what was my speed? Five miles a minute. Yeah, it was 25 miles per five minutes. So I'm going five miles a minute. Is that cool if I reduce it? So even if the graph itself isn't linear, I just want to know the average speed, right? So even if I slow down and speed up, I can still get an average speed. So that would mean just doing this. Here we go so far. What should be true about my average speed from here to here? Yeah, now my average speed, my average rate of change of position, my average speed should be 
negative. Does that make sense? Because mm -hmm. now I'm going back to my house. I'm losing distance from my house. So now it should be negative. And sure enough, what, what point is this? 525. What point is this? 10, 0. 10, 0. So average rate of change really just means find the slope. Yes? It might be semantic, but uh, is, so speed can be measured through velocity camp? I know one oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Camp. So if I really want to be careful, it's velocity that includes direction. Speed is the absolute value. So I want to be really careful because I'm also a physics teacher, so I might as well like tell you the whole story. Velocity can be negative because velocity includes direction. So even if I turn in my car, I'm still going 50 mile an hour. I'm not suddenly going negative 50. I'm going into a black hole. I don't know. <laughs> but velocity negative is fine because it just means I'm going. So if this is positive, this direction must be negative. I love it. So now, can somebody just tell me, how do I find the slope between these two points? Yeah, yeah, y2 minus 1. So y2, let's just say this is 2. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So this is 25 divided by negative 5. I get negative 5. It kind of makes sense that it's the direct negative of this because of the symmetry here. All right, I can see that. Okay, okay, maybe, maybe. Negative 5 miles per minute. Oh, I see. Got a few more minutes. Yeah. So let's do a fresh function. Let's do a function that's that's worse. And you want to do that because there's worse functions in your homework. Let's do the same idea with a fresh function. Okay, I'm gonna erase all this. Oh, let me keep this up. Why not? I'll move you over. Go. No, keep going. Um, so let's try. Um, what do you got, Jeff? Uh, yeah, let's try the square root of x minus 2 plus 5. Yum. If I wanted to graph, does anyone know what a square root function basically looks like? Didn't we talk about this before? It looks like a parallel hello, all right? So it looks like this. Can somebody tell me what's the lowest x I can use? Two. 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 Um, so I can use the domain of this would be 2 to infinity. So let's make a little table of values real quick. What do I get when I put a 2 in? 0 plus 5? Five. 5. What about when I put a, get out of there, 1. When I put a 3 in? 3 minus 2? Three. Yeah, 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 3 minus 2 is 1, square root of 1 is 1, plus 5 is 6. What's the next good point to put in? I don't want to put 4 in. I don't want to put 5, I want to put 6 in, because that's the next good number to have in here. 6 minus 2 is 4, square root of 4 is 2, plus 5 is 7. So I can kind of give it a little bit of a graph here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, oh, yeah, this is the one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so I'll do this by 2. 2, 4, 6, 8. Ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So two, five, three, six, six, seven. Where are you at, Sergeant? All right, so it's going like this. Okay, that's kind of gross, Jeff. I should have made it a better scale. Damn it. That's all right, Jeff. You'll be fine. Um, so let's say I want to know the average rate of change. Wolf camp. On the interval, um, two to six. Do you see what this means now? So the problem could have just said, for this function, find this. And that's all they say, correct? So then what do you do? You could graph and make a table, you can graph it, and then it becomes Pretty simple, because what does average rate of change mean again? One word? Slope. So what two points does this tell me? From two to six, so what's the first point? Two, five, so I want the point two, five. And the point, what else, at the end? Six, seven. So can you find the slope between those two points? 
So if you keep in mind that all average rate of change means is slope, you just gotta find the two points, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's all average rate of change is asking you. Right? And we're not finding the slope of this curve, because we can't. We're finding the slope of this straight line between the two points I'm curious about. So how much did the function rise? It started at five and it ends at seven, correct? So how much did it go up? Two. And how long did it take for it to do that? Four. So it went up to over four, whatever. So let's say this is hours and this is uh, miles. So I went up two miles over four hours, two over four. So what's my average rate of change? One half. In this case, it would be, what would the units be? Miles per hour. Half a mile an hour is basically trying to go on the 15 at certain times of the day. You're going about half a mile an hour. Okay. And do you guys see where two over four came from? If you just do the slope, right? Seven minus five is two, six minus two is four. That's all average rate of change is, is slope. All right, so I think I'll go ahead and stop there for today. I think on Monday, uh, we'll have the group work thing. Um, I'll have the practice test. I think we'll get one more section done in chapter three, so we might not quite finish three. And Wednesday will now be the day of the review. Wait, on yes. Monday, we'll have the... No, I'm sorry, Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday, sorry. Okay. Okay. My brain, sorry, my brain, you know. Tuesday will be when I see you next, yes.